just make sure and look at them and make sure they're not broken or dry or cracked. Make sure they're oiled all over them. All good. You have one more shim, it's on the back of the inner clutch hub. Go ahead and put it on now, slide it all the way up. All right, your clutch hub is going to be just like this. So what the main thing that you want to do is this seats all the way against that shim. If it doesn't, you won't be able to move the clutch. So the way that you would do this is to put it in here. Let's start it. You're going to need to rotate it as you go to line up the clutch disc. It's a little tight, but they'll go. You want to pull on the panel also. Once you have the clutch installed and it's pushed all the way down, you know that it's proper when you can take the backing plate and pull it forward. You see this play right here? The, out, the inner hub is seated all the way and your, spread, your pressure plate, which is right here, will move in and out. If this doesn't move in and out, then you have the clutches It's not seated all the way. So once you make sure this is all the way down, this, clutch, this inner clutch will move in and out. That's how you know that it is set up correctly. Now once you've impacted the, and torqued the nut back down, you want to make sure that the, pre the inside pressure plate moves all the way up and make sure you have no play in the clutch plates because if you do, the clutch will never engage. So it's pulled all the way up tight. The outer plate, the activation plate, has an outside on it. So if this goes to the outside when you put it on. Four springs, it's relatively simple. They just go on. There's no direction. They're both the same on each end. really doesn't matter where it goes, it's just a square. Just make sure that the outside is out. Now once you get all four bolts started, you want to make sure when the spring pressure is on it, you have no play in between the inner and the outer hub. And the clutch plates are pulled tight. That means that spring pressure is holding the clutch plates where they need to be. You can use an impact if you like, just run them down to it. But don't use the impact tighten it all the way. What happens is you'll break off one of these ears that hold the clutch on. And now you're going to install the mechanism that actually activates the clutch. There's an ear here that goes in between the spring. It slides on the shaft. Make sure that the index on the shift shaft is in the center as you see it right there. And you have the baron goes in this hole, it has a recessed part, then this only goes on one direction, as you can see, you can't put it on this way, it won't fit. It's like this rides in the bearing, so this rides on top, rides like that, and that is correctly, that's how it's installed correctly, it should look like that. Alright, we ordered a um, clutch kit from uh, High Lifters, it's supposed to be a 2200 stall. Um, I've actually ridden one of these 420s. Um, I've got 27 inch tires, 28 inch tires on my uh, 420. So we're going to be installing this high lifters clutch kit. First we're going to remove those four C-clips on the top. All right, once you have the four clips out, a spring washer on top. We've got a spring also here. That's the spring that holds pressure down on that. Here are the springs that we're going to be replacing, which is going to have to have a special tool which we're going to make to pull those off and we'll show you when we get there. Let me get it loose first. Alright, we've already installed three of the springs. We're going to do the last one to show you how it's done. Okay, we'll just roll it until it comes out. Get the old spring out. has a lot of pressure on it so you're really going to have to hold down on it as you pull it to it. Once you get it in place, you tap it in with a small ball pin hammer. That's it. And it is installed. That's a high That's install what it looks like when it's finished. You go back with the backing plate. The spring washer actually is a spring. See it here. And this goes back on like that.
So all I did is put the C, uh, C clamps back in, the C clips, put it in the vise, tighten a little bit, put the clip on. That's it. Once you have it back together, slide the clutch back in. Make sure that the one-way bearing is working correctly. There's no index on that, so slide it back on very carefully together. And if you remember when we took it apart, it was a little bit difficult to pull off. So you'll want to take a, a wood hammer handle, just tap it back on. Works well, you don't want to need have too much on that. You don't put down too much, they put too much on it. I just put a little bit in it like that because it won't come off. It, that's just factory shit. Yeah, we just put the nut back on, bend the tie back down, and there you are. Now there's a timing hole on the side of the engine here. If you look here, if you can look in there, if you, I don't know if you can see it, there's, there's your T and your F, which is your top and your fire mark. You line your top mark up, which is lined up right there, come around this side, Check that your cam and your index is lined up. Cam timing is on. Just a light coat of Honda on on this last engine cover. Put the engine cover on, engine cover bolts, and that'll complete our, our build. Um, only thing left, I think, is the water pump. And there is two O-rings in that front cover also you want to make sure you replace. Here's one of them. And the other one's a real small one on this um, dial pin. Make sure that these O-rings are in and these dial pins are in. If not, you'll have a problem. This is the oil pump. This is where oil pressure comes from. So make sure that those are in and new O-rings are placed on them. Just kind of go over it and make sure everything's on. Looks like it's in place. Tight. All the bolts are tight, everything looks good, the surfaces are clean. Make sure you wipe off the output shaft because it had an O-ring on it. You just want to make sure it's nice and clean before you put it back together. If you look inside here, you see this is the water pump on the outside. It has a slot cut in it. On the camshaft, it also has a pin that's inside of the camshaft, actually inside the diameter of the camshaft. That needs to line up. That drives the water pump. So when you put this on, make sure that you have the water pump slot lined up. All right, next we're going to do the, uh, the water pump. And the only thing with the water pump, just make sure you replace the O-ring inside the cover. And then also, in our bag of bolts, there's five bolts. And only one bolt has a copper washer that copper washer goes on the bottom make sure you replace that it'll come in your gasket kit okay we're going to install the starter we we'll put a new o-ring that came in the in the uh, o-ring kit the starter only goes on one way can't mess that up and I'm just going to reiterate this um, put everything in ziplock bags and labeled everything I don't think I really showed it in the video Put motor mounts, differentials, bottom skid plate, the reverse cable, footboard, plastics, clutch case, I mean everything in plastic bags labeled. Just in and as I took them apart and labeled them, kept them in order. So as we reassembled, the bags were in order also. Alright, and now we are reinstalling the top end pistons already on if you've already completed the or even thinking about attempting to do the bottom end crankshaft you definitely know how to put a piston and cylinder on top end but just kind of keep us up to date here this is where we're at and we've already dropped the lifters in but just make sure you um, however you took them out make sure you put them back in the same place All right, head gasket obviously is up, upside, downside, moving forward. All right, cylinder head 
just slides down onto the cylinder no resistance just easily slides on but the uh, head nuts there's a head bolt that goes there two open nuts and two acorn nuts um, I think the, we're going to use a torque wrench about 25 to 30 foot pounds of torque reinstalling the valve cover and the only thing on the valve cover it'll come with two new copper washers there's an arrow here and an arrow here the engine back in the frame um, everything we did to remove it we just did it in reverse put it all back together turn the key on runs sounds perfect